Tonight, a broadband battle is brewing, MySpace still exists, and we throw stones at Google Glass houses. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 254 for Thursday, January 15th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. With integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Next month, the FCC plans to vote on petitions from two cities, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Wilson, North Carolina, which could help the towns preempt state laws that make it difficult or impossible to set up government-run broadband. This comes after President Obama sent a letter to the FCC yesterday asking the commission to eliminate these types of state laws. Yesterday in his speech, Obama said, if the community decides this is something we want to do, they should be able to do it. Chances are the FCC won't overturn these laws in one fell swoop, but either way, we're holding a vote, increases the tension between Big Cable and the Commission. Chairman Wheeler said he and his colleagues will carefully review the specific legal, factual, and policy issues before us. The agenda for the FCC's February meeting hasn't been released yet, but they will also be discussing the new rules regarding net neutrality. And according to a new report released today by the U.S. Research Council, there is no way to use technology to replace the government's current practices of bulk data collection. Now, this report is basically a response to the now famous revelations of former intelligence contractor Edward Snowden about the government's vast data collection enterprise. About a year ago, President Obama asked the Office of the Director of National Intelligence to produce a report to determine whether software could be created that would allow the intelligence community to conduct targeted specific searches rather than continue with their practices of bulk collection. Well, their answer to this question is no, we can't. The American Civil Liberties Union, of course, has weighed in, noting that the current bulk collection of data hasn't stopped any act of terrorism, but they do admit that the report does acknowledge that there are additional steps the intelligent community can take to increase transparency, improve oversight, and limit the use of information collected. Now, the company that owns MySpace says that MySpace still exists, which might be a surprise to some of you. The social network got more than 50 million unique visitors in November. That's a 575% increase over the same month in the previous year. Tim Vanderhoek is the CEO of Viant, the parent company of Specific Media, which bought MySpace from Rupert Murdoch's News Corp three and a half years ago. Vanderhoek told the Wall Street Journal that MySpace is mostly active on Thursdays, also known as Throwback Thursdays, when Facebook users come to MySpace to grab old selfies to share. Vanderhoek also revealed other surprises, including the fact that MySpace users generated more than 300 million video views in November. MySpace active users are still dwarfed by inactive users. Vanderhoek said MySpace still has more than 1 billion registered us users, most of whom haven't visited the site in several years. Still, MySpace is staging a comeback of sorts. The company introduced new advertising technology yesterday called the Viant Advertising Cloud, which says that it's better than Facebook's because it can track consumers from the online ad to the point of sale, even in physical brick and mortar stores. Google Glass is in the news today with some headlines claiming that Glass is dead or on hiatus, but others saying it's just coming under new leadership. We've invited Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch to tell us the real story. Welcome, Alex. Good to be here. What's going on with Google Glass? Well, it seems to be kind of all the above at once. Um, Google Glass is being moved out of the Google X uh, part of the company and over to Nest, where Tony Fidel, who uh, runs that division, will be its formal boss, but it's keeping its current boss, Ivy Ross. So day-to-day -day leadership is the same, but under a new part of the Google empire. Um, what we're hearing is from two different sources is that Google is not done with the project but that it is true that they'll stop selling the current Google Glass headset, but they will release new hardware this year when it's, quote, done. So it's kind of a mess. I don't think anyone really has a perfect handle, except for Google, of course, on what they're doing, but certainly it's a very big day in the glass empire. So Google, Google X is their lab where they kind of try things out, but they're moving it away yeah. from them. So are they basically now hiding it from us, what they're doing next? 
I don't know if I'd say hiding. I mean, certainly they're going to go dark. I mean, I think they've been very public for the last couple of years of the project because they wanted to get feedback. They wanted to get devices into the market. Um, I mean, but I mean, they're going to go and, and build something new outside the public eye. So sure, you can call it hiding if you want, but it's also pretty standard product development practices for hardware stuff in Silicon Valley. So I mean, hiding, I feel, is, is a kind of a pejorative term, but it's maybe more tactical than anything. Right. So you mentioned before that 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 Google Glass will fall under Tony Fidel. And he, of course, was the creator of the first generation of iPods. Do you think that means that Google Glass will kind of maybe look a little nicer than it does now? Well, the, the old joke is that a, uh, Google Glass is kind of a face segue, um, <laughs> which I've always really enjoyed. I, I don't know. I mean, I think the reason Google Glass wasn't that attractive to begin with wasn't because they didn't have a good eye for design, but because it was just very hard to build in so small a package. I think they would have loved to have the entire set be smaller, but they just didn't have the tech for it. So maybe now, three, four years down the road from its, from its introduction, we have just better hardware. Um, that's speculation, of course. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I would hope. I mean, the original iPod was an iconic product for a reason, which is because it was it's beautiful. So if some of that juice can kind of work in, sure. But, you know, that's just us hoping. Right. So if I still want one, if I was thinking, if I was on the fence and I still want one, can I still buy one? Uh, don't. One. But okay. two, yes, you can. Uh, until the 19th. So I think you have about four days. If you want to drop uh, 1500 bucks on Google Glass, you still can. But after that, you're going to be kind of stuck outside in the dark until the new stuff comes out, if it does. And that's still just what we're hearing. That's not, of course, confirmed 100% or certain. So... Right. So, so what do you, if you were going to make a prediction, do you think this is the beginning of the end or a bold new chapter? I mean, the cynical part of me wants to say beginning of the end, but honestly, I've used Glass a number of times, and I had one experience that really kind of blew my mind. So I'm really hoping they can go into the tank and come out with something that's just fantastic and lives up to the original promise of the hardware. Because if it can be as cool as we all thought it was going to be, then I think we're all going to want one. Right. So, and I still want a segue. I'm, I'm just saying. So that's that's not very good. Don't do that. Okay. Don't, don't, don't get a segue either. You've saved me a lot of money today. Thank you, Alex. I do, I do what I can. <laughs> that was Alex Wilhelm, tech reporter at TechCrunch. And where can we follow you, Alex, if we would like to follow you? I write at TechCrunch.com, and I'm on Twitter at slash Alex. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Obama is waging war on hackers while chatting with YouTube celebs. But first. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. Now creating your own professional website or online portfolio is even easier. Here's why you'll love Squarespace. Live editing on one screen, making changes as clearer and simpler with no more toggling to the preview mode. There are 14 new designs, giving you over 30 to choose from. Squarespace has templates designed for specific professions like musicians, artists, architects, restaurants, weddings, and e-commerce. Cover Pages is new with Squarespace 7. Choose from 10 new templates, perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand or personal identity. You can also use Getty Images. That means for just $10, you can pick from thousands of professional Getty Images and use them on your site. E-commerce is available for all subscription plans. You can also update your website from wherever you are with the portfolio note, metric, and blog mobile apps. And the note and blog apps are now on Android too. It's incredibly easy to use. And if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 seven. It's also inexpensive. It starts at just $8 a month and Squarespace takes care of hosting so you don't have to. Plus you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two week trial with no credit card required and start building your website right now. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code tech night to get 10% off. To begin using Squarespace 7, existing customers can go to the Settings tab to activate all the new features. We thank Squarespace for their support of tech news tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Yesterday, President Obama announced plans to modernize laws intended to protect innocents from cyber attacks like the one that hit Sony Pictures. The proposal says that anyone who intentionally uses a computer to obtain or alter information which exceeds authorized access could be found guilty of hacking. So this means clicking on a link to breach data or even retweeting a link to breach data could find you facing up to 20 years in prison. Obama's proposal comes in response to the massive data breaches of the last couple of years. But according to security experts, the proposed legislation could be used against anyone with the slightest link to digital crime. It will be interesting to see how this one plays out. Now, not long after the upcoming State of the Union address, President Barack Obama is set to answer questions from three YouTube superstars, Bethany Moda, 
Glozell and Hank Green. I'm impressed with anyone who knows who all those three people are. The three will be in the White House with Obama, and the questions will focus mostly on the issues facing their audience, tech-savvy millennials. Well, all those tech-savvy millennials, I'm sure you do know who those three people are. Regardless of your generation, feel free to submit questions using the hashtag YouTubeAsksObama. The YouTube interview will be next Thursday, January 22nd. Elon Musk, the CEO of both Tesla and SpaceX, has been talking for years about the possibility of high-speed transportation system called a Hyperloop. Now it looks like he's going to build one. Musk tweeted today that they'll be building a Hyperloop test track for companies and student teams to test out their pods, mostly in Texas. So what is a Hyperloop exactly? Well, it's a way to move people at up to 760 miles per hour inside a pressurized capsule that floats on a cushion of air inside a tube. It sounds kind of far-fetched, but then again, so did Tesla. And speaking of Elon Musk, we all know he loves technology. His businesses are based on it. Yet, apparently, he is really concerned about robots taking over humans. I'm with you. I am also scared. So he's donating $10 million to the nonprofit Future of Life Institute with the aim of, quote, keeping AI, artificial intelligence, beneficial to humanity. Now, this is not the first time Musk has spoken out about his fear of AI. You might remember some of his more famous tweets saying I, AI is more dangerous than nukes. The funds will be used to run a global research program to help mitigate the existential risks facing humanity. I like the idea of a fund for mitigating existential risks. I'm talking to you, Terminators and Cylons. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.